My name is Blake. Uh, I've been with the Boulevard for 22 years now. A long time I've been here. Yeah. So uh, everybody in the back is laughing at me here because you can't see it because they're like, you know, I've been here forever. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm our lead appliance technician. Uh, I've, uh, we're factory authorized for pretty much everybody. So I, if, I've pretty much seen everything. There's some things I haven't seen and some stuff I you know, still wish I don't see. So ho hopefully I'll, I'll give you some good information uh, on, on these products. Um, what I'm going to cover today is just very common things that we have and common questions that we have and common issues we have with front load machines uh, and dishwashers as far as the new soaps and the new way the dishwashers are having to function. The biggest, the, the biggest issue we have and the biggest complaint that we have is with front load machines. The two biggest complaints that I get with them, one, they smell, two, the whites aren't as white as they should be, and three, um, that, my mind is blank. Anyhow, I'll come to you in a second. But, but the biggest reason is, is with the machines, because of the lack of soap, we as a general public and we do, the, the manufacturers of the machines do not manufacture the soap. They manufacture the machines to work with their thing. The biggest problem we have is basically over sudsing, over putting too much suds for the machine itself, for the usage of the machine. Front load machines as a general rule, manufacturer designing them, they're not designed for small loads as a general rule unless they're super light loads, anything okay. under 10 pounds wet weight. Anything more than that, they won't wash properly. Or they won't, they'll wash properly, but they won't spin out properly. Because the machine itself, the machine itself, how it's designed in the spinning process, and we're gonna go for some, I'll explain. The spinning process, how the manufacturer, how they, de how they spin, is the computer up here, we have we have a couple different computers in, a, in the, the unit itself. The computer itself monitors how it does out of balance. It does it off of the motor itself and how quickly the motor is turning. The motor itself has a tachometer, so the device tells how quickly it's turning on the motor. When it goes to spin, the computer says for the motor to turn at a certain revolution, at 200 revolutions per minute. That's enough to get it turning to pull your clothes tight against the outside of the drum. Once it does that, it actually measures how quickly it is turning. Now, if you think of a bucket, when you put a bucket with water in it and you, and you take and you spin it above your head, it goes up real slow, but it comes down really fast on the other way, so it goes like this. Well, that's exactly what will happen with your clothes, is it'll pull it up slowly and it'll drop down the other way really fast. That's how the machine determines the balance. Once the, it can get it so the, the machine, the drum is turning at the same rate all the way around, and it will do that by various things, by, by changing how quickly it turns, adding more water, taking water away, spinning at different rates, trying to get it to fall in certain areas, it will spin. Well, if you, with the machine of a front load capacity, when you have something that's one heavy weight, so if I threw in a bunch of shirts like I'm wearing here, and threw in a heavy towel, well, I threw in like five shirts of this and a heavy towel, there is no way in the world this machine will be able to spin it out because it can't equal the weight. It never will be able to equal the weight on it. So what the machine will do is it will try to spin it as quickly as it can, but it will eventually not make it. It may, but it may not. So what will happen is the machine itself will just shut off and people, a lot of complaints, people say, my machine doesn't spin my clothes out all the way or they're still damp or they're still wet. That's generally the reasons why. So what they recommend is if you have clothes, they're recommending to at least put medium-sized loads in there, especially if you have heavy items. So if you only have one heavy item to wash, like a, uh, like a pair of Levi's or, or a set of towels or anything of that variety, they recommend that even you just keep a couple extra sets of towels. Everybody has garage towels, old towels they have to throw them in there with them just for weight. Just to be able to distribute it so it can so it can spin your, your it can spin your clothes out properly. It has enough to do that. What is considered a medium-sized load with the machine and what they what it's designed for is when you put your clothes in and you pat them down and it comes halfway up the door. That's considered a medium-sized load. A large load is when you put them inside your machine, you pat them down, and you're three-fourths the way up the door. That is a large load. That's roughly about 10 pairs of adult Levi's. 
five king size sheets. It's huge. It'll do a lot. So in saying that, you say, well, gosh, there's not a whole lot of water and how's it getting clean? Well, if you picture this and you turned it the other way around, you turn it upright like a top load machine. Now a top load machine is that it sits there. The reason for the agitator and the reason for the agitator in your top load machine, people think is there to heat your clothes to get it clean. It's not. The agitator is there to move the clothes through the water because the more times it can actually turn your clothes over within the wash cycle, the cleaner your clothes will get. It's not there to beat it to death because you could take a, a big blanket and throw in a top load machine and it'll beat, the, it'll beat it to death, but it won't turn over. So the inside where it's beating is clean, but the outside isn't because it's not being turned over inside the water. So when you picture it this way, they put it in here. Once the machine will make sure that once your clothes are completely wet inside the machine, it will, at that point, you'll have about three gallons of water in the bottom, three to five gallons of water in the bottom, and it's mechanically turning your clothes over within that water. Well, that's how your clothes are going to think, because it's mechanically turning them over. Instead of beating them to death, it's actually mechanically turning them over. Well, we as the general public, and back to the soap part, um, we, we love soap and they give, you these nice, they give you these nice dispensers that have these nice marks that say minimum and maximum. And so when they see this, they say, well, gosh, this is how much soap I should be adding because it says, it says this is the maximum and this is the minimum. But what they're saying, basically, the man, all the manufacturer is saying, and this is where the confusion comes in, is this is the maximum amount that it can hold. Not the minimum amount, that's the maximum amount it can hold before it starts leaching into the machine. Because this is how these dispensers work. These are these dispensers here are a siphon action. What happens is this this cup here fits over top of this cup right here, and what happens is it fills it up, it floods it, and gets it above that inner straw, and then it siphons it out. It creates a siphon. So they have to say, well, this is the minimum amount you can put in the maximum amount that it can hold before it will actually start running out on its own. So that's why they say this. But the problem is, with the machines, the people that manufacture soap, they love, they love to sell soap. They, they, they say it is big, they say, well gosh, this is great. We have this big thing of soap here. And you'll spend a couple bucks for this right here. Well, <coughs> truth of the matter is, you don't need this much soap ever for your machine, especially with the, with, with the front load machine. Because we're talking dilution ratios. With the old top load machines, when they would fill up with water, you would have you'd have roughly about you know 30 gallons of water in the machine. With this one, once everything's wet, you've got three and a half to five and a half gallons of water. We're talking dilution ratio. If you put all this soap in and you have a small load or a medium-sized load, because this is designed for a large load. Again, we're talking large load, 10 pairs of Levi's. This is what we're putting in for 10 pairs of Levi's. Well, if you put less than that in it and you're throwing this in because this is what they sell you in this nice little packet here you're putting in too much soap so what happens is you get excessive soap suds it's like putting having a little bit of water putting a lot of soap in it and agitating it up you're going to have soap suds everywhere the same thing will happen with the front end machine you're going to have soap suds everywhere once you have soap suds everywhere it gets everywhere in the machine the, ad, the soap suds in the machine only last for roughly about six to seven minutes of agitation and they should be gone. You shouldn't be able to see them anymore. If they're past that point, it's going to stay in there for the rest of the cycle. Doesn't matter if you rinse it or not, it will stay in the machine. I've been to people's homes and literally I've started the machine from with nothing in it, started it, and I had soap suds halfway up the door within five minutes of agitation. I didn't add any water to it. I didn't add any soap to it at all, or cloves. That's just residue inside the machine. Because once you have soap suds, the machine can't drain soap suds. It, it's equivalent to trying to, to take a, a glass with soda bubbles at the bottom of it and sucking them out with a straw. It doesn't work. The machine can't drain them out. So what happens is the, the soap suds stay in the machine. They get spun out of your clothes, so they look nice when they come out. They get but but it stays in between the baskets, your inner and outer baskets. It stays there. So the next time you go and you put your clothes in, you add, you already have soap residue in the machine, you add soap to the machine, and you get more soap suds, and you get more residue. So eventually it starts building up inside your clothes. 
So when I get the complaints during the summer months, people say, my clothes smell, and they don't smell nice. They smell, they smell like a sour smell, especially when they get warm. That's because there's soap residue in your clothing. Now this can happen with both top, with, with a low, as with a low fill top load machines, along as, the, as well as the front load machines. So we build up this vicious cycle, because every time it builds up more and more and more. And then on top of that, the machines don't get cleaned on a regular basis. Front load machines and the new low water usage top load machines require cleaning. There's a cleaning cycle after run through. And if they don't have a cleaning cycle, most front load machines do. Top load machines, most of them do. But you have to run a cleaning cycle. There are cleaners that are available at any grocery store, anything, you know, anything of that variety. You have to run through these monthly. If not, all that junk and stuff, all that soap residue and stuff is built up in between that drum and it just stays there. And it just, it, and so what will happen when the residue stays there, it starts building up bacteria. Doesn't matter if you leave the door open or not. You can leave the door open, because you should leave them open, and we'll get to that. It's going to build up that bacteria and build up that junk. I will go and pull back boots. People say they're clean. I'll pull them back like this, and you can look right there, and, you'll and I'll wipe my hand, and it'll come out black from sludge from, from, the, from the machine. So that's where you get, that's why you have to clean these front load machines. Very imperative. <laughs> okay, but back to the soap. As far as what the manufacturers recommend, this is their recommendation for, we're talking a regular soap, we're not talking a three times or a four times, you know, they have from three and four time concentrate. This is for one and two time concentrate, which is most of the stuff, I, th I believe the, the Excelsior we sell is a three time concentrate, I believe, is that what it is? What they say for that, and this is, this is it, for with a water softener, and a medium sized load, again, that's push, putting your clothes in, patting them down because you're taking the airspace out of it. Because you leave them all fluffed up, as soon as the water hits it, it drops all the way to the bottom. That's why you want to put them in and pat them down. When they're halfway up the door, that's a medium sized load. Two teaspoons of detergent with the water softener. That's it. Three without. Liquid or powder. Liquid or powder. That's it. The easiest way I tell everybody if they're not marked on it, is to just take your, your teaspoons, get some water, put it, put it in your measuring cup and mark it, with, mark it with a marker. Okay, that's for soft water. If you have hard water, three for a medium sized load, four for a large load. That's it. If you're using more than that, you're gonna get soap suds everywhere and you're gonna have problems. And that, because the soap suds will cause a bunch of things. They'll cause your white, they'll cause your colors to fade, they'll cause your, your whites to dingy, and they will make is the machine will make it smell guarantee it there is no if ands or buts about it it will happen so so these are really important things so so don't buy these things unless you plan on doing large loads every time because you're wasting your money because because this isn't this is not the proper amount for what you need for the product if you're doing a large load you can use that but that goes in the, in the machine right in the, right in the machine in correct because it, well, it can, and that's the question I get quite often, it can go in here, and yes, it will fit through there, but I've had instances where this membrane on this, where this membrane doesn't break down all the way, and then it clogs it up inside there. That's why I don't recommend using these, um, you know, unless you put them right in the machine. Don't put them in the dispensers, because you will have issues if you do. So that's one thing that, so I'm glad you asked that question or pointed it out, because that's something you don't. Uh, want to use. Now, as far as, so with this machine, all these have a cleaning, I mean, they have a cleaning cycle. A lot of them will actually ask you, every, you know, if you want to clean it after 50 cycles, that's what it is. But basically, once a month, you will need to run a cleaner through it. You need to run a cleaner through it, make sure you get all that stuff out of it. Uh, if you have a front load machine at home and you're concerned about if you're using too much soap, next time you do it, throw your clothes in there, don't add any soap. Let it agitate for a few minutes. Look at it. If it is, if it's, if you see soap suds coming out of your clothes, it was there. First thing I would do is let the cycle finish on its own. Get it out of your clothes. Get a cleaner. Run it through it. Get it cleaned out. Then, at that point, put your clothes through there. Run them through there until we can get all the soap out of your clothes because we need to get this. We need to get them as clean as possible. The other thing that people ask about all the time, that my whites aren't as white as they used to, as they as they used to be. Well, I have to be honest with you. 
it's basically due to the lack of water the machines are using. And, and because they don't move all the water through them, the whites don't get as white as they used to. So, I have to recommend that you have to do one of two things. If your washing machine has a steam function to it, a lot of them do, they have a steam function to it. I recommend you use the steam cycle every time you do whites. It's consistent, you have to use it every time. If you don't, they will get dingy fairly fast. But if you do, it does make them brighter. But it's consistent. You can't just say, oh, this is a little dingy, I'm gonna throw it in here today, it'll make it bright. It won't. But if you use it consistently, it will make it better. It won't get as bright white as the old machines, but it won't be as dull as what the machines leave them in general. It's, it's, it's about in between. But it's better than what than what the machines themselves can, can provide. Now, um, you asked about top load machines. You said they have the ones with the non-agitator. It's already across, we're just gonna cover this real fast. They have the top load machines that have the non, doesn't have an agitator in it. Now those machines are different. Those machines are, they work, but they were, but they're on the high end of the spectrum. They use very little water because again, they have to, because they're mandated to use so much water that, as somebody from the industry put it to me, um, that if you do anything larger than a medium size load with those, they do not clean very well. I gotta be honest with you. If you do a large load with those, they do not clean very well at all. Because again, we have to have the water to be able to move it through there and turn them over. So if you take those machines and you have those machines like you do, if you, and this is what the mistake usually happens is people take their clothes and they layer them around it. When you let, you're used to layer them like your old top load machine with the big guys here, you lay them around it and then have them roll over. Well, the way they agitate, they're using the clothes themselves to rub, rub against each other and, it's, and it causes a twisting action. What they recommend if you have that type is no more than a medium sized load if you want them to be clean and two, you have to take your clothes and ball them up. So basically you take your shirt and you put it in a ball, you put them in balls all the way around the agitator. That will help the twisting part of it so it doesn't twist up as much and it will actually roll upon itself and it will prevent the twisting and actually will help get them cleaner better. So if you are wrapping around it, they will come out twisted every time. So there's something just to you know, try it. be aware of. That will help on that. Um, anyhow, uh, any other questions on using care of these machines? Anybody? Well, I have that set. Mm -hmm. And I found that if I, I do leave it open afterwards, and I usually do the clean the side right after, mm -hmm. like you said, but then in that little rubber piece there, I usually just put a, a thread in here. Uh -huh. I put a washcloth in here, it come out so that it dries it out, mm -hmm. and I remember that it's there so that I don't get that black joint. So yeah, and that does help. And so like I said, um, and, I, and I have people also, because they don't want to leave it open, what you can do also if you have like a small washcloth is you can just put it right here and just kind of close the door on it. And, and, then that's it will, and, that, and that will hold it. Oh, but it, that's enough ventilation. That's enough ventilation that, that will allow it to, to, um, to breathe. Because I usually leave it wide open. Yeah, you can leave it wide open, but sometimes you're in hallways and so, in yeah. places that are inconvenient. And if that's the case, like I said, all you have to do is just put a little bit of a, you know, of a washcloth right here. And you know, just kind of just push on it, and it, you have to you know, shove it. Just push it, and it'll it'll basically save this. Like I also that. Just look when I leave it open, I leave the door open too. Leave this open also. Yeah, is that? No, that's fine, and you can do that, and that's great, and, and, and that will help. Now, with with these also, and I should probably cover this. And this is probably not part of it, but since we got a smaller, and I have to cover a whole bunch, so I don't think so. Now, these type of dispensers, all manufacturers use these now. These are like we're talking like the siphon type dispenser. Um, Fabric softener itself, when you're talking uh, fabric softener, it is, for the goes in the machine, it's animal fat. If you didn't know that, it's animal fat, fat and wax, if you use it. I don't use that, I use that one that you said. Right, and that's and that's different. I'm saying the most, like oh. the downies and the stuff, oh. that's, that is that animal fat. build that stuff. Right. And what will happen sometimes is, is that either gets too old, because it's been sitting on the shelf too long, or it's frozen and defrosted. And what happens is when people look at their machines, you see all this blue stuff, all this coagulated blue stuff, that's all the fat that's, that, that, has to, that doesn't break down properly. And that will clog the dispenser. So if you start, if you start to see that in your, in your fabric softener, throw it away. 
People say, well, I'll dilute it and make it thinner. No, it's still not working right. You need to throw it away because it's, got, it's gotten old and bad. So, but because of these are a siphon type thing, there are things that will affect how well it siphons. So, in so much, there are some days, if it's a colder day or there's a low moving through because there's a storm coming through, the, the barometric pressure, whatever affects barometric pressure, how affects how well these siphon. So there are some days that these won't siphon out as well as others. So if they're full every time with water, there's an issue. Take them out, usually clean them up around there, that takes care of it. If some days you find one that has a little bit of water in it, it's just luck of the draw. There's nothing wrong with the machine, but it's something just to be aware of. So, but if they're clogging up every time, the best thing to do, take them apart, clean them out, just make sure nothing's in there, and 99% of the time that takes care of the problem. You can just rinse that out? Correct. So we, we need to do that if we're using the soap that you recommend that doesn't have the fabric soap? No, I'm just saying, I'm saying you don't have to worry about that if you start seeing it coagulate, where, where you start getting oh, clumps. you can see that. Oh that yeah, that you'll soap. see it. You'll see it. Okay. Yeah, you'll see it. Because with the fabric softener, you'll see it, because it'll be like, it, when you look in here, it's like all greasy down the side, and it's the color of it, and it's all greasy in here, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Now, the soap itself, you're talking the soap. The soap won't coagulate. I'm talking the fabric softener. Okay. The stuff so you're right. using won't do. Okay. Right. The stuff you're using does not do it. The stuff that we sell, if you're using that, that that does not do it. I'm talking if you buy downy or bounce okay. or Separate. you know stuff stuff like that. That's the stuff that that goes bad and will start coagulating. So why does that work well? Why does that soap work well? Soap. It's just the way it's designed. Um, you know, I, I don't know all the particulars on that soap, and I wish I knew more about it. I know more about the machines than the soap itself. But that soap, what we've been selling, uh, it's been phenomenal. Um, it's been a, a product that actually has worked really well. It cleans well. I'm not having an issue with with it. You know, uh, with it not you know having your fabric still are still soft. But not they're not allowing the minerals to go back in your clothes. I'm not having that issues with it, so I don't know, Jerry. You might know a little more. Just, on, on I'm, I'm not an expert, but just a kind of quick thing is that it's it doesn't have all the fillers in it that you know the tide and all that kind of stuff has to make it blue. It doesn't have dyes or anything like that, so it's a very clean detergent. Number one, uh, number two is that it, uh, it's made to activate with the water. So when it, when it activates, the cleaning agents go to work and it cleans while it should clean, and then it dissipates and go goes away. Whereas again, most detergents. <coughs> Have so many extra fillers and stuff like that that they have to be rinsed away and flushed away and stuff like that. This detergent doesn't have it. That's why you really don't. I'm not gonna say you don't ever need fabric softener with it because it doesn't soften your. You know, it doesn't apply something to the clothes to make them soft. But the most important thing is it doesn't leave residue on the clothes. That that's what makes them soft. You know, when you get clothes that are all stiff and stuff and you don't use, you're using those other detergents because it's leaving residue that's actually stiffening your clothes. Correct. That's it, and that part's correct. And another thing that does stiffen your clothes is minerals. I mean, if you don't have, a, if you live in an area, if you're on Quail Creek water, which most, with a lot of people are Bloomington, Bloomington, and you get a lot of static out of it, and that's strictly due to the minerals in your clothing. They're in the water going into the machine. So with softeners, that does help. If you have a water softener, generally it actually softens the water anyway, so you don't get, you know, your clothes stay a little bit softer, and with that, it makes it even more softer. With that. And I've heard people say that they, when they Run a rinse cycle. They don't put vinegar in there with the water. Does that damage the machine? No, it doesn't hurt the machine. It's just, I mean, you can. Uh, people use water. people use vinegar to. They think they use it for hard water. They use it for hard water stuff. It doesn't really affect one way or another. I've heard people do that. I've heard of people uh, instead of using the cleaners that they provide you, they the manufacturer actually LG or LG for long manufacturer Electrolux. If you actually look in there, using care manual for the cleaning process, they say to buy a cleaner at the store, or uh, you can use a cup of bleach. You can use either or when you're using a cleaning cycle. So either one of those will work. I, I know they do recommend, and part of the reason you get a lot of the build-up in it too, because people have eliminated the use of bleach. They don't use bleach like they used to. And so that's a lot of the problem also. You get a lot of bacteria growing in the machine, a lot of problems because of that, because, because of the lack of, of bleach. So a full um, cup of bleach? That's with the cleaning cycle, yes. And they pour it right into the top? They, they pour it right into the dispenser, right up top. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, when you, so when you have the cleaning cycle and ask you if you want to clean it, or uh, let me see if I can remember. I don't remember. I don't remember how to get it. I don't remember how to do it. I'm 
Lewis and I believe you put on Delic, Cycle Start, Council Start. It's those two, if I remember correctly. No, I don't remember. Anyhow, it's in use in care manual. <laughs> it'll, tell, it'll tell you how to do it. Um, uh, this one, oh, this one's actually in the specialty cycle, sorry. This machine's a little different. This one, under your specialty cycle on this machine, if you actually go, it has your... Mine just comes up and says, do you want to... It does. It does. It, after 50 cycles on yours, it will come up. Yeah. But you can clean it at any time. There is a cleaning cycle, and it's in your use and care manual. So if you, yeah. And there's a certain keystroke you have to do on this to purposely put it in there so you don't accidentally put it in there. So... Um, with the soaps now, now I'm going to go back back so for a second. I just, I just uh, with soaps, both soaps are, are HE soaps. Now you're going to find some that are off brand that are not HE. Don't use them. Make sure you use an HE soap. HE is two things. If you don't know, it should be a low sudsing detergent, and it also has a binding agent in it. What that binding agent does is it grabs onto your the dirt when it comes out of the water and suspends it out in the water and doesn't allow it to go back inside your clothing. It's really important, but this is the kicker. With HE detergent, it has a shelf life of eight to ten months, and, and at that point, um, it becomes high sudsing again. So don't buy it to store it. Again, don't, don't, the manufacturers don't make it. They don't make the, they make the machine, don't make the soap. But but that is true. So don't go to Costco where they they say the three box three boxes of soap, you know, and, and you store two of them, you know, and you finally get to it a year later, and all of a sudden you got soap suds everywhere in your machine. And that's the reason why, because the the part that's made it low sudsing is broke down. It's no longer working. So could you just use less soap? No, because because it's just going to well you can you can, but it's going to suds up. Okay. It, you know, no matter what you do, it's you're going to have more suds than what you want. And because of that, you're gonna get the, the residue build up inside the machine uh, because it's gonna build up like that. So just something to keep be mindful of. So if you bought the 152 pack of these pods from uh -huh. Costco and that's all you have, and then you bought a front loader, I mean, you, uh, you sell them at a yard sale. Or if you always <laughs> are doing a really large load, it's safe to use one of them. So you wait until there's 25 shirts. Right. Or whatever. Okay. Right, and it's safe to use weight when you have large loads, okay. but but if you but but for anything smaller than that, no. I mean, you're using way too much soap for, for what you need. And these are, I mean, when you're talking about I don't know, 20 years ago, these are designed to wash a lot more clothes in one load than a regular washing machine did 20 years ago. Is it that is. Correct? It is because if you think about it, we talked about the agitator. The agitator's in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. The agitator is taking up space within the drum. Right. So this so it's cut your capacity down. This you don't have an agitator in here to cut your space down, and instead of the agitator mechanic, you know, agitator turning your clothes over, right. now we're having the drum mechanically turn it over as it's spinning this way. It's turning your clothes over, right. and so and the, a lot of these have recirculation pumps on. People say, well, the top is not getting wet. They do. I mean, because it makes sure the machine. This is kind of inside baseball stuff. I was playing. Um, the machine has what's called a pressure switch in it. And what a pressure switch is, and all machines have them, and when you, had, when you have the machine, you just adjust the load size, it's a pressure switch. It's a, it's a switch up in there that when the water fills, the machine fills up with water, the water goes into that dome. That dome has air in it, and it starts displacing that air, and it pushes it up to the pressure switch. When enough pressure gets pushed against that switch, it tells the machine it's full. So when you used to take and adjust it for large, small, you're adjusting how much pressure it had to be pushed against it before it knew it was full. These are a fixed pressure switch. So what will happen is you put your clothes in there, as it's agitating, it will, and it rotates your clothes, it's going to soak up all the water in your clothes. As the, as the clothes soak up water, the water level is going to drop, and the machine's going to see that because the pressure drops and then it's going to fill up more water. So it's going to make sure your, your clothes are completely 100% saturated with your soap concentrate and water before, and then it's going to give you a fixed level in the machine. So it's always going to wash at the same rate. Now with your type of machine, it does, but it doesn't. But this will, because this is, because yours don't necessarily turn your clothes over, especially if a large load, and only fills up with this much water, and you have this much clothes up here. It may not. That's why I'm adding buckets of water because exactly. it makes me crazy. Exactly. So that, so that's why that's why these.
So those machines are basically due for smaller loads. The, these are these are designed for larger families. Okay. Larger families, bigger item stuff. That's Safe what to throw designed. a big blanket in there, small comforter, stuff like that. Yes, as long as as long as there's movable space. So if it's in there and it moves as a mass, it just like it like moves as one big piece. Right. Because yeah. it's, it's not going to be. It's just going to it's just going to move as a mass. As long as it can as long as it can roll with it. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. I'm gonna move over to the dryers here. And there's not much on dryers, but I will a couple things, a couple things with the dryers. With the with 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 the dryers themselves, you have a couple things. Now this is for mostly this is just information stuff. Do you use bounce? Anyone of you use bounce? Use bounce? Okay. Okay. This has Bounce is great, but Bounce also, again, it's got waxes and animal fats in it to make your stuff soft. Well, with these, with the new filters they're using now, they used to have a metal screen, now they're nylon, now they call these the microfine mesh. Now this catches everything, I mean, it literally catches everything um, as far as stuff that comes through them. I will get a lot of complaints that people use them that the machine does not dry very well. Well. What this stuff does is it clogs this up. Even though it's clean, it's clogged up. You actually take this, pull it out of the machine. I've taken this out there. I have one or two things. I'll pull it out of the machine. It's taken out, and I'll look through it, and you can't even see through it. It's black. It's actually literally black. You can't even see your hand through it. Or you'll take it and stick it under a sink. You turn the water on, and the water will just sit on top of it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so if you use bounce, or you use any type of any type of stuff like that, I do recommend that you pull these out at least once a week and take just some just some soap and water and hot water and just and take a scrub brush and scrub it out. Get all the stuff out of it until it flows through. Fl flows freely through it and then at that point uh, you won't have any problems with that as far as this being an issue of drying because the dryer itself is all, how fast this dries is based on a couple factors. One, how fast the machine here spins them out. Two, if there's soap residue left in your clothes or not, because that will also slow it down. And three is airflow. If you have restricted airflow, it's going to dry not very fast. So, so if you do use this stuff, you know, please make sure that you clean these out at least once a week uh, and get them nice and clean. I have a problem in that little filter right inside there. Sometimes with towels, this gets filled up pretty You write it well in there? Yeah. So I just have to reach in and take it out? You can. You, What's can, you, the deal? you, you can. You can take it out. Um, it, it's basically it's because it's trying to keep it here and it can build, and there's kind of a metal bar down there and it does build up right in there. And I, and I agree with you. It can build up in there. Um, there's two things that you can do. Um, you can do this monthly if you want to. Uh, you can take like a vacuum. Uh, we have the, we have certain brushes that they sell. We have brushes that are customer service for that are uh, designed for vents. They're actually uh, you know they're bendable and they're and they've got like a wide that kind of spread. Then you can take and you can just stick that right in there and just and just clean them all out and just sticks way down inside the vent. And that way the stuff down the bottom you can stick it down there and just grab it and then pull it right back out. Because they have these here. This is removable. You have to remove a couple of screws to remove it. Uh, you actually have to take off this screw here, this screw here, and there's two inside right here. So there's four screws you have to remove if you want to take it off. But one of those, one of those brushes, that will get all the lint out of it and grab all the lint. And then um, the dryer itself will basically, whatever you broke free, it'll just send it right out the vent. Then your next time you start, it's not right out the vent. Is that something just with that model or that brand of machine or? No, all, is it, them? It, all of them can catch. I mean, all of them can catch. Um, you know, but it only does it when I have like a lot of towels, like like that. Lots of lint. Yeah, lots of. What I found is just that I, I can manage like 20 minutes after I've done it, 10 minutes, and stop it and clean down because then it dries faster. Yeah, because it's not. Because the lint, now, now I, this is kind of off, off subject a little bit, but lint is actually a byproduct of the washing machine. You didn't know that. It's actually a byproduct of the washing machine itself. It's actually the tearing of the fibers inside your clothing. And so they get torn slightly, and when you put them, in the, put them in the dryer, they shrink and come out. That's where your lint comes from. So uh, 
versus a top loader scene versus a, a, that's why they went to this microfine filter instead of the larger screen one, is because the old ones, they had to be only about 80% efficient because the agitator tore so much fibers in your clothes that they had to make it bigger to allow lint to actually escape by it and because they know that lint's getting by up into your dryer vents. With these, these are about 90 to 95% efficient with what they catch. I thought it was because it was cheaper. No, I, I actually, actually because because it, because there's less there's less damage to your clothes, so you actually get less lint with front load machines than you would a top load machine. So, but these 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 things are great. I honestly, almost, these things are great. But that's the reason why why that why that is and why they changed to that. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Blake. Yes. I actually have a question on the bounce thing. Okay. <clears throat> Isn't there a problem like with the sensors on a dryer if you use bounce sheets? Like you use not time dry. Okay. But yeah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Did I, did I talk about this or did you just remind me? I don't know. I missed okay. It. Okay. Um, the machine itself. Now, now most machines, and this machine, and you've seen on yours, right here in the very back, there's two metal bars. You see them? My fingers are on them, but you probably see them in the back. There's two metal bars. Now, all the drying on this, except for the time dry, uses those sensor bars. And what that bar does is your clothes run across it, it measures the moisture content in your, in your fabrics. Now, it can be thrown off based on what's in the machine. So if you've got, again, we're back to one towel and a bunch of these shirts. Well, if the majority of what's going across those sensors are this shirt instead of your towel, it's gonna say, I'm dry. Because the time you have on this, is not a fixed time. This is all estimated time. So if I started the dryer with nothing in it, it will shut off within, within seven minutes. They'll say I'm done, I'm dry, over with. The only time it will run a specific time is the time dry. If you put it 30 minutes, it will run for 30 minutes. So what can happen with bounce, with bounces and stuff like that is that stuff gets on those sensor bars, it actually gets on those sensor bars and then it creates a little bit of a barrier there, so it doesn't read, it doesn't read it properly as it goes across it. So what they recommend, if you, again, if you use these, um, they recommend you take some alcohol and like a cotton swab or you know a little bit of towel or something, and wipe those sensors down about once a week just to make sure they're clean. Because if you get that, if you get that build up on it, it doesn't read it. Right. And so you're gonna, you're gonna be disappointed. You're gonna come out of stuff that's gonna be damp. And you're gonna say, why is this damp? That's why because it can clog them up. So thank you for reminding me. Yeah. So. so what about like dryer bowls? Would you ever use those in a dryer? It's supposed to, you know, soften your clothes instead of using soft. Is that? You know, I don't, no, okay. I wish I could take more of those dryer balls. Yeah. I, I've always thought it's been a gimmicky thing. You know, it, 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 just, it, just, uh, it just sounds like a pair of tennis shoes inside your dryer to beating around so I've never really and sometimes they get caught in your clothes anyway yeah. but I, I actually got some for free tried them a few times I thought this is the stupidest thing but you know if you're trying to stay away from bounce and you know, some people swear by them I, I don't think I right. found them to be annoying I got them free and tried it and I thought they were and I thought it was just because I can't think in that mode it just seemed weird to hear these guys yeah, I, I can. I, I I can never figure. It. I, I can't wrap my head around. And I, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time, and I can't. I, I can't think of any logical explanation. And, and I've never asked a manufacturer, "Hey, what about these?" Because I, I, I didn't, thought it was a it was a romp appeal, pocket fisherman thing. You know, if you guys understand this, we're all old. So, yeah. <laughs> so, masters are gonna be like, "Who?" Yeah. So, <laughs> um, okay. We're going to cover some stuff with dishwashers. Um, and these are the newer ones, and this may or may not pertain to you, but it will pertain to you someday when you buy them because all manufacturers are going to this, unfortunately. Well, it's not unfortunately, it's just the way, it's just the way they're having to do it. Dishwashers, again, dishwashers have to meet a water usage and energy usage requirement. Now, the water usage part of it, is, that's been resolved for a while. I mean, that, that's been going on for roughly about 10 years now. And roughly most of that is taken care of as far as as far as far washability issues with it. The biggest issue we have now is the energy requirements that the manufacturers have to use for dishwashers. The biggest thing that uses energy inside your dishwasher is the heating element. 
because for drying purposes. Um, as you can see, this one doesn't have a heating element in it. Most of the newer dishwashers are coming out and they don't have a heating element in the dishwashers themselves. There's no heating element for drying in a period. Scary. I know. That's not, that's not fine. But, well, but, but, but it does have a heater in it. Now, that's, now, this is the thing. It does have a heater in it. The heater is actually what's called a flow through water heater. It's down within the motor itself. And it heats up the water as it's going through the wash system. As it's pulling it down and, and pressurizing, it's heating up the water. This makes sure that the water, when it's washing, and all, of them, all the good dishwashers do this now, it makes sure that the water's at least 135 degrees for washing, okay? It heats it up to 145 degrees for drying if you select the sanite, but it's usually about 140 degrees if you don't, it heats it. The dishwashers have, they're putting on a, a material that's called mastic. This is, this is black stuff you see right here. Do you see that? Okay, it's called mastic. It basically, it's a tar type material that is adhesed to the to the outside of the bin here. Now, what that does is it holds the heat. So the stainless steel has to get as hot as the water is because it's stainless steel. That's why they don't do it with plastic dishwashers. The stainless steel gets as hot as that, and that mastic holds the heat, and, and, and so that tank will stay really hot. So for the drying part of the cycle. What it does is it opens up a vent and lets room air into it. Well, the warmer surface, you know, the, everything's gonna move to the warmer surface. So what's gonna happen is that, that, that room air hits it and the water's gonna be tracked to the warmer surface so the water starts pulling to the tank. So it starts evaporating and pulling toward the tank and actually stays on the tank and then runs down the tank and in the bottom. Well, it does a great job. It dries really well, as long as it's not plastic because of cohesion. Plastic likes to stick. Plastic likes to stick onto itself. It doesn't like grease or if it has indents in it. If you have those things, it will not dry with the newer dishwashers. They will always be damp. But when you open the dishwasher up, you're gonna you're gonna say people say look at their tank and they say, gosh, it's all wet. Well, yeah, but your dishes are dry. The tank's wet. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people will crack them open a little bit allow them to crack a little bit, just allow them just the, the air to go through it and some of that will go away. But, um, it's, but so with the newer dishwashers, you have to kind of expect that. How but, long has it been that they haven't had heating on? Well, some manufacturers do still. Oh, you know, some man, some do. Um, the higher end ones of the stainless steel are, go, are going away from them. But the ones that have the heating element, they, during the drying cycle, is they are pulsing. They go on for two minutes, they go off for two minutes. On for two minutes, oh. off for two minutes. That's why it's really important with the newer dishwashers, they all say you need to use rinse agent and have a rinse agent light on it always lights up that it's really annoying. Well, it's trying to annoy you because that light is really important. Rinse agent is, they always, they've sold it really well a long time ago making it think that it's a, making your stuff spot free. It's not what it's there for. Rinse agent is a flattening agent. It takes your water molecule and flattens it out. So it makes it as thin as possible. So the, so the evaporation part of it will happen easier. So it will go away easier. So if you don't use it, it doesn't dry as well. That's why. And a lot of the dispensers will have, and this one, this one does the control panel. You can adjust how much you put in. If you want a little more drier, you can add more rinse agent. There's a little dial in there. This one on the controls. You can adjust how much you put into it. It's really important with that. You know, that you use rinse agent with your newer dishwashers, all of it, with or with, with a heating element or without a heating element. With these, you absolutely, 100%, no question, you have to use it. The other ones, it, it will help quite a bit. These won't dry at all, period. Um, a lot of things with St. George water too, that we find out, we have, unless you have a water softener, and people complain all the time that, that especially their silverware, that they get, that they get uh, copper stuff on them. They put them like a rust on them. That's because our standard water has a lot of iron in it. And so if you let your utensils touch, that's when you pull them apart, you get that gray, you get that rust spot. That's what it's from. It's the iron sitting in the water being trapped in your, being trapped in your stuff. So um, you can get, some, some of these models have, like this one, that's why it manufactures now because they're using salt to the water and it's showing up more. They have these little things and these are dividers. So you can put all your stuff in there so they don't, they don't touch. And 
that helps tremendously. So is the reason that a washer now, my mom has a new washer, she complains that it runs, she has it on the shortest cycle and it runs like an hour and a half or longer because it's using less water and it's just... Because, because, it, because it has to make sure, because with the old dishwashers, they pull it in they, based on where your water heater was, the water heater's across the house. Now, this dishwasher has to pull in water to be able to wash. Well, it pulls it in from the same tap that your sink is. So if you turn your hot water in the sink and it's cold, you ask for the dishwasher to wash it. So if you turn it on so it's hot initially, the water comes into it, it's great initially. But then after it washes for 10 minutes, it drains out and then it starts filling with water again. Well, that's coming from across the house. So now this time it's filling up with cold water, cooler water. So the machines now, to get the washability out of them, they have to heat. They have to make sure the water is heated, so they heat their own water. That's why it takes so long, because if it because if it doesn't heat the water, it won't wash. Period. Because with the little water that they use, it has to be heated. Okay. okay. That makes sense. Now, the other thing is with the soaps now is is I'm going to open this one up here. Our soaps now. State of Utah and five other states or seven other states about two years ago, three years ago, banned the use of phosphates. Why are dishwashing detergent in another state? Yeah, they, well, well, no, they, 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 they banned the use that. of phosphates. Why do that? Well, the manufacturer, for the most part, they stopped, they, they stopped, so they said we're not going to do two different formulations for, for these states and everybody else. Pretty much all manufacturers now don't put phosphates in their soap. It's actually gone. So you're not going to find it in your soaps anymore. Okay, you can still find some here and there, but most of the time they, they've just taken them out completely because they're not making two different formulations for different states. So it's really important that with your dishwashers, now with your dishwashers, that you buy a soap that has, and I've got a finish. Um, the best thing now, because the phosphates are gone, if you don't have a water softener or it's You've got it set so you don't feel slimy coming out of your shower, you know, so it's, you know, you know, so it's a little on the hard side, but not terrible. Well, you start getting it built up in the cycle machine, you start seeing the white. So when you have that, you need to get a good soap that has two different things. That if you're actually, um, I'll just, I'll just now this soap, what it has, you just have that white granular stuff at the top, and you have the other, you have the gray stuff at the bottom, and they color it blue or gray. Um, what the white stuff is, is, is an enzyme, it's actually an enzyme, it's actually designed to uh, take the food off your dishes, uh, eat it off, and then it breaks, it's a different middle plastic than the other stuff is, so it breaks apart at different times. The other stuff is actually a bleach, and so the enzyme, the bleach will kill the enzymes, so they have to let the enzymes go in first, do their job, you know, you know, break down all the hard water, break down everything else, and then they put the bleach in after to kill it all off, the thing down the drain. So you have to use this type of soap. I mean, they sell a bunch of other soaps now. They're just a powder. If you have hard water, they don't work very well. This stuff is great, or you know, the finished stuff is great, or um, the Cascade Platinum. This is called this is called Quantum. This is called Finished Quantum. This is their high one for the Cascade, but it has to be the Platinum. The Platinum works great too. They both work really wonderful. So they, they both work really well. So. So this is the enzyme, the mm -hmm. white and the blue, gray. It's the bleach. Alright, what's this? That that is that is a rinse ball that they, they put a little bit of rinse in it. So 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 when you so when you buy that, like I said, um, that's what I recommend for that, for that reason, that's it. That's all it's just you guys, so you know you get like a you get your own little So what's the cost on that in comparison to they're about the same. They're about the same. I, they, it just depends on which one you like. I, I, I haven't really figured. I haven't bought them. I haven't bought one or the other. I've had people that complain that they have, you know, the, the dishwasher itself is getting hard water buildup in it. You know, I always recommend the same thing. They have dishwasher cleaners. You can find them in the same aisle with with the, with your soaps. Run a cleaner. So if you have hard water buildup, you're getting it. Run a cleaner through it. Run a good one through it, um, like a Lemmy Shine. And there's one by Finish called Glisten. Those are a citric acid. The other ones you can get, they're junk. Don't buy them. They don't work. 
the, the, the jet dry version of, of a cleaner, it doesn't work. But if you buy the Lemmy Shine one or the other one, they're citric acid, and they tell you to, if any cleaner you put in there on the, bar, the bottle that says, put in with your dishes, it's not gonna clean your dishwasher. So because I have soft water, mm -hmm. um, I was using a powder for a while, and I didn't use very much. And you don't have to. It, I, and I thought these were just way too much. <coughs> it is, it, and, that, and that's exactly the same so thing. So even when I was using the powder with the soft water, I could see a white powdery film still on my dishes when I opened it, and it was completely done. So I went to a liquid detergent because I can't, I couldn't stand the powdery. It's like a residue that was still on everything. Now, do you rinse your dishes off clean, pretty much pretty clean paper, right? Okay, that could be costing that also. Because the manufacturers, all manufacturers recommend, and, 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 and some, it's hard to do, sometimes I understand it. They do recommend you knock your big stuff off your plates, you rinse your tomato bases off, sauces off, strictly because the plastics can get soft and they'll turn red. Your, tomato, your egg yolks and your milk, if you're not going to wash right away. Other than that, they want you to knock the big stuff off, put your dishes in there, and then, because the soaps are designed, even your powders, your stuff, they're designed to to break down your your with your food, attached to it, and go down there. Well, if you have nothing in there and you're putting soap in there, it's attaching to everything else. So so you get so when you pull it out, you have this you have this you have this kind of like grime on it, and you wonder what that's from. That's exactly what it's from. It's because there's nothing for it to break down with. Okay. okay. So scrape off the egg Tomato, tomato sauce, and knock off the big stuff. You know, maybe, maybe if it's something runny. I mean, if you have like, you know, ranch, you know, ranch dressing or something. You know, again, it's, you don't want to put it in there and you know have it sit for a cup. But that's what they recommend as far as that. And then uh, use your full amount of soap. This, this is designed. These are designed. Even though they're larger, they're designed. If you leave your dishes like that, to work. You know, either way. You know, it's not add less for soft, add more for that. These are designed just to run the same for all. Okay, but if you're going to use the powder where you get out of the store, again, halfway for soft water, halfway for that. If you're rinsing them off perfectly clean, basically you're going to dust the bottom of the, of the container with, with, with the with the, with the detergent. You're basically just going to cover the very bottom and that's it. If not, it's going to stick to everything else. You're working back by a really stupid dishwasher that the same guy who sold me my washer. Okay, so the dishwasher opener thing is right here, right next to this. So when the detergent, it only opens this far where it's supposed to pop open all the way. But no, it pops open this far and that's as far as it goes. So I don't use it. Well, I just put my own, I have, it's. Well, you know, to be, to be honest with you. <laughs> they yeah. redesigned it right well, no, to be, no, to be honest with you. Well, see that flapper thing you're talking about, what, what catches that? is if you have, it's fine as long as you don't have anything squared off, like a cookie sheet or something, that's what catches it and stops it from opening. It'll actually flop open and hit the bottom of this. Okay, I believe you. So, but <laughs> most, 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 most of the time that's what it is. But if you notice how Bosch, because Bosch doesn't change this overseas, they keep saying, notice how they have this nice little, this nice little cup right here on this? Well, this, if you actually look at it, this drops right into here. The dispenser thing is a US thing. If you, if you look at any dishwasher overseas, you won't find a dispenser in it. They take and they take those have those packets right there, and drop it right there. Close well, the door. Well, this is a US thing. Well, I went back to the salesman and I said, hey, and he goes, yeah, you know, they learned that it was a poor design and they've changed it. And I'm like, well, he goes, well, so what I would do is just put your detergent in at the beginning, throw it at the bottom, and send it close your dishwasher. And that's what I do. Well, it, it, it puts it in a little early, but, but yeah, it, it, it will work. Because you know. it won't, I mean, it won't open and the stuff doesn't. Right, so, so if you've got, so if it won't open, you're just throwing your detergent in there with like the powder. Basically, I'll be honest with you, you're throwing a lot of it down the drain. Because it fills up, it doesn't rinse, right. does it, it doesn't rinse, and it doesn't, it doesn't rinse. Because a lot of them have particulate sensors in it. What a particular sensor is, it just measures the amount of particles flowing through it. it and based on how many particles it sees flowing through it, it's going to alter your wash load. So if it sees very little, it's going to shorten it. If it sees a lot, it's going to make them longer. It just all depends. I used to set my timer for 10 minutes because I knew it popped open in 10 minutes. I'd set my timer for 10 minutes and I was like, it's just, it's a feed. It's just right. stupid design. Right. So, Never buy that brand again just because they did that to me. But we know where you can get a new one. I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm not for getting information so I can go shopping. So, 
And then um, also make sure with your dishwashers, um, all dishwashers, most manufacturers, most manufacturers, I can't, I can't speak to all, but most manufacturers, um, these bottom screens come out. Oh, no kidding. And if they do, make sure you pull them out at least once a month. Make sure you clean them. Uh-oh. <laughs> Because they get they get they get they get gunked up they get gunked up and they and that will because because no can't you just leave it take it out and leave it in the dishwasher and it washes it oh, yeah he, he well, thinks of, no, but th let me let me explain because you know this is something that people kind of take advantage of and they really don't they really don't think about what it is but how these actually work is on the bottom of your wash arms and that's this one right here there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's a port right here do you see that and it sprays in. How an actually dishwasher actually works is it washes your big stuff off your dishes, and then all of them have a, have a variation of this one. This, this is just Bosch, but they all have variations. All your food comes down, hits the bottom, and then it gets the water gets sprayed. It gets actually pushed into here from that port. It actually pushes all your food and all your water down in, down inside this cup right here. Now sometimes you'll have a square piece. Sometimes you'll have depends on the manufacturer. Sometimes you'll have a big round piece, but you'll see a place with holes and it's pushing all the food in there. And what it does, it pushes all the food particles and it holds it down inside here. Well, then it draws the water through this microfine filter here back into the machine to be pushed back up to the wash arm to spray up. And all the stuff is held here until it goes to drain. And it drains from this first. It pulls everything out of this and drains it out through your drain pipe. So it sucks all the stuff out and then it pulls the, all, the, all the cleaner water that's all up top out last. So if this gets dirty, this screen right here gets dirty, it reduces how well it pressurizes. And if it reduces how well it pressurizes, it affects your washability. So if you do have a removable, check your use and care manual. If, it's, if they say you can remove and clean it, please do so. It's very important. Okay, is there anything else? That's all I've got. That was a lot. And that was good. There's going to be a test later, so... <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, I have, um, if you guys want, I, this, these are, this, these, and what I'm going to do is, Finnish actually sends these to me. I actually request them. I just send me a bunch of these. And then send them home. Send them home with, with, with some of these so you can, you can try. Yay! And, cool. I know, because what if you if you use it and you like it, then you're going to buy it, right? Well, there's a coupon in there too. There's a coupon in there. Too. <laughs> so you can so you can try those and see it, see if they see if you like them. These work really well. Like I said, I recommend these are the Quantum and the stuff we sell too. But you know, we all three of them. We sell a variety too that's really good too. Uh, on the dishwashers, um, how much really is a main brand on the dishwasher? A lot. Is it really? Because you're turning into the if 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 you're asking now now if you're asking me personally what I if you're asking me what I personally what I would buy if you is that what you're asking me yeah but not not to promote I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm not I'm not I'll tell you what I personally I got my hand on it I have a box this question I recommend these to everybody these are the best cleaning most problem free dishwashers on the market because they work. <laughs> I have no, a Bosch seriously. dishwasher too. Seriously. They, they just buy, they, I have a Bosch to, See, people ask me all the time and say, well, gosh, why do you recommend this? Let me tell you, as a, an appliance technician, I'm not, figure, figure me like the builder. You know, the builder, the builder's wife. All their stuff gets put off because they don't want to do it when they get home. I think I want to fix my stuff when I go home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I have a Bosch dishwasher in my house. I've had it for 12 years.